zoax.net. Lesson 9. Consequences for Real Numbers The purpose of this video is to teach you how to reason algebraically. Most of the confusion in algebra arises from the uncertainty about which operations are allowed and which are not. Always remember that everything that is permitted follows from our properties of the real numbers. In this video, I present seven consequences of the properties of real numbers and show how to derive them. These consequences are common facts that are used frequently in algebra and the reasoning that I present will help to clarify the rules of algebra. Once you master this material, the rest of algebra will be much easier. Our first consequence or rule states that any real number times zero is zero. I will refer to this as the multiplication by zero property. To derive this, we begin by using the additive identity to add zero. Then we use the property of additive inverses to replace zero by a times zero and its additive inverse. Next, associativity lets us regroup the terms. The distributive property allows us to factor out the a term. The additive identity allows us to replace zero plus zero by zero. Finally, the property of additive inverses allows us to replace this sum with zero. This proves that a times zero is zero and commutativity tells us that the product is true in the other direction too. I recommend going over all of the arguments in this video very carefully. Go to our reference page at zoax.net so you can take your time to read over and understand these proofs. I will go over the rest of the proofs somewhat quickly. The second rule I will call the additive inverse of a product. Again, we start out with the left side of the equation. First we apply the additive identity. Next we use the property of additive inverses. Then we use associativity. After that, we apply the distributive property. Then we apply the property of additive inverses. For this next step, we use the rule that we just derived about multiplication by zero. Finally, we apply the additive identity property again to finish the proof. Note that this works the other way around by commutativity. The third rule is called commutativity of inverses, since it involves interchanging the order of the multiplicative and additive inverses. First, we use additive identity. Next, we use additive inverses. Then we use the associative property, then the multiplicative identity. For the next step, we use multiplicative inverses. Then we use distributivity. Next, we apply the additive inverse of a product. This reduces to one by multiplicative inverses. Then this sum is zero by additive inverses. Then this product is zero by the multiplication by zero property that we proved. Finally, the proof is completed via the additive identity. The next rule is called the additive inverse of a sum. We begin the proof by applying the additive identity. Next, we use additive inverses. Then we use additive associativity. Then we apply additive commutativity. After that, we use additive associativity again. Next, we use additive inverses. Then, the additive identity allows us to remove the zero. Another application of additive inverses allows us to write this as zero. Finally, the additive identity finishes the proof. The next rule is similar to the last one, but it involves multiplication. This is called the multiplicative inverse of a product. The proof involves the same steps, but for multiplication. We start with the multiplicative identity. Next, we use multiplicative inverses, then multiplicative commutativity. The next step follows by multiplicative associativity, then multiplicative inverses. We eliminate the one via multiplicative identity. Then we use multiplicative inverses again. Finally, we finish off the proof with the multiplicative identity. The sixth rule is the additive inverse of an additive inverse. This begins with the additive identity. Next, we use additive inverses. Then we use additive associativity. After this, we use additive inverses again. Finally, we finish with the additive identity. The seventh rule is similar to the sixth. It is the multiplicative inverse of a multiplicative inverse. We begin with the multiplicative identity. Next, we use multiplicative inverses. Then we use multiplicative associativity. This is followed by multiplicative inverses, 
Finally, we finish with the multiplicative identity. That finishes the last rule and the last proof. All of this may seem difficult at this point, but learning these rules is essential to learning algebra. You should study the proofs on our reference page closely until you understand them.